guys, welcome to an episode of In the Kitchen with Rosie Christman. Today I wanted to share with you how I process kefir yogurt. So here on my counter I actually have some kefir yogurt, which is that beautiful white liquid. And then here I have my kefir yogurt that has been being processed on my counter. So, I, one thing to know right off the bat, when you do kefir yogurt, a lot of people that are doing it for the first time, they worry that they're ruining their grains or that they're not working quite right because they look different than what they have seen in the past. So I just wanna point out here, we've got some whey right in the middle and your grains are mostly on top. Sometimes your grains will be on bottom. Sometimes it'll all be mixed together. Sometimes you won't see a single bit of whey. If I turn this jar around, there's a different look that you'll get over here. So don't worry if your jar looks a little bit different each time, that's just the nature of kefir and you're probably doing just fine. So at my home, we consume about a gallon of kefir every two or three days. So I do it in gallon jars on my counter, but you can do it in quart jars, you can do it in pint jars, whatever size it works for you, that's just fine. So I have cloths that are cut out for my jar, and then I just have hair ties that I use on it. If you're using a normal jar, you can just use a normal jar ring, and just don't put the top on the ring. You can put your cloth on and then the ring, and that'll hold your cloth on just fine. So just a suggestion if you want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and process this kefir. Now, we, what we do is we put the kefir and the grains, the whole thing, through a mesh strainer. You can get these mesh strainers at Walmart. They come in all different sizes. They're pretty relatively cheap. So I liked having one that fits right in the container that I strain my kefir into because then I don't worry about having to hold it or maybe the kefir grains falling in there. Now when I say kefir grains, I'm re referring to these little it's just the organism that makes the kefir yogurt. Those, I think you can see them kind of in the video. They're little globules. You'll see them better here in a minute. So I have a lot of kefir in this, so I'll only do a little bit at a time. So what you do is you put your kefir in there. Then with a rubber scraper, you just scrape it through that strainer. Now you can see some of it that's going through is kind of just the way. It's pretty clear. And then some of it is that white kefir yogurt. That's fine, that's normal too. And you just keep processing it. Your grains are pretty darn hearty. So you're probably not going to hurt them by smashing them and getting all that yogurt worked through. And that's just great. Now, as I'm doing this process, I'll just explain a little bit about the benefits of kefir. So kefir is different than normal yogurt. Normal yogurt you cook for eight hours at like 100 degrees. And that's what makes your yogurt with some cultures. But this, the grains are your culture. So this is what the grains look like. They're small and big and some are skinny and some are bigger. And that's normal too. Um, kefir yogurt is a bit runnier than normal yogurt. And it just, the whole process happens on your counter within 24 or 48 hours. Instead of having to cook it, just stays at room temperature. Normal yogurt has anywhere from one to three different strains of probiotic cultures in it, where kefir yogurt has about 30 different strains of probiotic cultures. So here's my clean jar, and because there's still quite a bit in here, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that kefir off, and I'm gonna put my kefir, the grains, right in my jar, so then I have more room for more grains in my straining process. Now you guys may not have two or three times doing this. Yours may just be one time and that's okay. So I actually might stop the demonstration right now of this so that you don't have to see me go through my entire um, jar of kefir, but that's kind of what your grains look like. That's what you're getting out of it. Now you want the proportion of grains to milk. You want it to be about a third or fourth grains to two thirds or um, three fourths milk. You can use any kind of milk that you want. Now, we've been using just normal milk from the store, process, or homogenized and pasteurized milk. You can use raw milk, you can use powdered milk. I've even used canned milk. I didn't like canned milk, but the powdered milk worked just fine. As long as it has a lactose base, you'll be totally fine, whatever milk you decide to use. There's different health benefits to different qualities of milk. Those health benefits will go over to your kefir. So you'll have a healthier kefir if you use raw milk, but it isn't necessary. That is a common myth 
So you just have your grains and you put your milk right over it. So I had about that much grains. So I'm gonna put about that much milk in it. And that's how easy it is. Now, I always just check my cloth. If it smells just fine, like totally clean, I'll put the same cloth over. This cloth has been there for a couple of different times straining it. So I'm gonna get a brand new cloth this time. And then I get my little hair tie and I put that over and there we have it. Now that's just gonna sit on my counter for 24 to 48 hours and then we'll have keeper yogurt. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Just that runny, beautiful white stuff. Now you have all sorts of things that you can do with your kefir. We love kefir smoothies. So this morning, my kids, they beg me, can we just have plain kefir? So it's pretty tart. So I will add some sweetener. Now my sweetener of choice is usually honey or stevia. So I just added a few drops of stevia or a few squirts of stevia and everybody had kefir yogurt, just plain for breakfast and they loved it. So that's one thing you can do. You can add a spoon of your favorite jam and mix it up and then you've got some flavored yogurt. We love green smoothies at our house. You can also use it as buttermilk in any kind of recipe you would use buttermilk. So buttermilk pancakes, buttermilk biscuits, anything like that, you can use your kefir yogurt in place of that or in other baking recipes where it calls for yogurt. But do remember in your baking recipes that the kefir is thinner, more runny than normal yogurt. So if it just calls for normal yogurt, you might wanna use a little less of the kefir because it's runnier. The other thing is some people ask about water kefir. I don't have water kefir, I've never used it. I have read up on it and it is a little bit more labor intensive, but you can do this with water. Now, if you're going to use milk kefir grains with water, you've got to switch it out every other time with milk. So I could, instead of having just put milk in here, I could put water in it this time. But then the next time, I'll want to put milk in it. So you can switch it out every other time and still get the probiotic benefits in your water, but you do have to feed the kefir with milk because that's what feeds it and helps it grow and helps the process work. So I hope that was beneficial for you. Thanks for joining me. And we'll have another episode here shortly teaching you how to do some green smoothies. So good luck in your kitchen and we'll see you next time.